The release of Christopher Nolan's film Oppenheimer has brought renewed attention to the history of the Manhattan Project, the research team that would bring the world's first nuclear weapon to life. But little is known about the consequences faced by many residents who lived and worked in the towns neighboring the Trinity testing site where the bomb was first detonated. Morning Joe reporter Daniela Pierre Bravo has been looking into that part of the story and she joins us now. Daniela, what did you find out? Good morning, guys. Well, almost half a million New Mexicans were affected by the radiation fallout of the Trinity test. These residents who were not part of the Manhattan Project say they were never warned before the bomb went off and they were never evacuated. We traveled to the Trinity site and surrounding towns in New Mexico to find out why it's taken so long to hear about their stories, why they were never compensated, and what comes next. How long have you, has your family had this ranch? Since the late 1800s, huh? The Pino family has called Carrizoso, New Mexico, home for more than a century. Today they are known as downwinders, meaning they're one of many New Mexican families who lived downwind from the 1945 Trinity nuclear test site in New Mexico's Jornado del Muerto Desert. The blast location was famously depicted in the recently released Hollywood film Oppenheimer. This is the Trinity test site, where 78 years ago, the world's first nuclear weapon was successfully detonated. The Pino family ranch is just 35 miles east of Trinity. They had cattle trucks on the outskirts of town that they were going to evacuate people with. Ready, but they never did. While the infamous Trinity blast took place nearly eight decades ago, the Pino family says it continues to feel its impact. The first cousin, their mother and three of their older kind of siblings were at this ranch when the test bomb detonated. Cancer diagnoses followed. My mom died of cancer. She went down fast. Yeah. So, Carmen, you had three brain tumors. Mm -hmm. It was one, but it, it would break out and, and, and grow again. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was going blind. <laughs> Margie here has survived thyroid cancer. My brother Greg died of stomach cancer. Before the blast, it's unclear what the Manhattan Project team knew about the health dangers of prolonged radiation exposure. But in a declassified memo on the after effects, the group's chief medical officer said less than a week after Trinity, the resulting dust cloud, quote, was potentially a very dangerous hazard over a band almost 30 miles wide, extending over 90 miles northeast of the site the Pinos Ranch was right in that zone. For decades, doctors have drawn connections between radiation exposure and health problems, up to and including cancer. From the studies of the atomic bomb survivors in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we know that there are multiple types of cancer for which re risk is increased by radiation exposure. Other problems have shown up, like increased risk for heart disease and an actual reduction in how long people live. So we're still learning about the health effects of radiation, but Clearly, uh, cancer is very well documented. A new study released last month and currently being peer reviewed finds that the fallout of the Trinity blast was far bigger than originally thought, impacting as many as 46 states in Canada. In 1990, legislation known as the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act, or RECA, was signed into law to provide monetary compensation to individuals residing downwind from atomic weapons tests. It included Nevada, Arizona, and Utah, but did not include New Mexico, despite the more than 450,000 residents that lived within a 150-mile radius of the Trinity test. On this vote. Now, a bipartisan amendment to RECA that would include New Mexican downwinders has passed the Senate and heads to the House later this year. Congresswoman Teresa Ledger Fernandez remains troubled that New Mexicans were left out of the original legislation. It is environmental injustice at the most explosive uh, proportions. There was no good reason for it. Today, Fernandez is helping lead the bill through the House. And helping Downwinders' families connect the dots between generational medical issues and the original Trinity blast, Downwinder advocate Tina Cordova. People didn't know about anything before it detonated. And in this little village back then, there was no electricity. We lived very isolated. They didn't know what radiation exposure was. No one knew what cancer was. We hadn't heard those terms in our community before. The work conducted at Trinity led to the eventual bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, which ended World War II in the Pacific. 
Now, downwinder advocates say it's time for the U.S. to compensate all downwinders for the role they played in ending the war to end all wars. I would say that we didn't know how bad radiation was back then, but we know better now. We reached out to the Department of Defense and the Department of Energy seeking comment about why these downwinders were never warned in advance about the Trinity blast, the lack of monitoring and inspection at the immediate aftermath of the blast, and why the downwinders have never been compensated. Both agencies declined to comment. Wow. No comment. You Daniela, you thank know, you very much for that report. Isn't it fascinating that wow. when they provided relief, they provided relief to everybody but, but New Mexico, Daniela, any uh, any reasoning why Congress left the original uh, the, downwinders. The downwinders out out of that bill? Yeah, I mean, from everybody from activists to legislators, everybody says that's a $2.5 million question. A lot of people are seeking answers. Um, as you saw, the, you know, the reports about this and uh, how, how it's been um, measured in the past are just coming to light now. So uh, it seems mm -hmm. like we'll finally get some restitution for these people who have been suffering for a while now. Yeah, that's Daniela, so important. Daniela, thank you. And Great work. Coming up.